Hi, my name is Nick Mihalovsky. I work on the Google Analytics team. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Google Analytics dashboard using Google Sites, Google Spreadsheets, and a new integration we have with Google Apps Scripts. Google Apps Scripts is JavaScript in the cloud and allows you to access many of Google's services, including Google Analytics. And so we've released a new integration uh, that allows you to use Google Apps Scripts to access the Google Analytics API. And with that, I can create a nice little dashboard uh, and share it with other people. So here's the dashboard that I'm going to show you how you can create. Uh, here's a little demo. This is showing me, uh, it's a Google site that's showing me visitors, visits, and page views over time. Uh, it's fully interactive here. I could change it, roll over to numbers. I also have another little visualization of data that's showing me the top pages on my site, organized by page views. And this, this little dashboard is really, really convenient. The data automatically updates every hour. I don't actually have to go in and refresh any data. It's all automated. I can share this with anybody on my team, even if they don't have access to Google Analytics, uh, because the data is in a different location. They don't have to have access to GA. Instead, they could just have access to the spreadsheet. So it's a really convenient way for me to share data with other people. Now, this little dashboard is actually powered by a Google spreadsheet. And so if I go over to the Google spreadsheet, here we see the visualization on the right that's embedded. And then on the left-hand side here is all the underlying table. So we're saying the date, the visitors, visits, and page views. And this is the data that we're getting from the Google Analytics API uh, using Google Apps Scripts. And this is the data over time. I have another tab here that's showing me all the different pages. Uh, and then here on the left-hand side is the underlying data source. So. What I'm today I'm going to show you is how to actually recreate this dashboard. Um, again, we released this little script and application that pretty much takes care of all the code for you. Of course, you can write your own script to do this, but we realize that most people just want to do this right out the box and save time. So we've gone ahead and created a little tool, and I'm going to walk you through how the tool works and how to recreate what I just did. So there's four steps in using the tool. You first want to install and configure what we call the magic script. This is the Google Apps script that we wrote. Uh, then you want to create your first report. I'm going to show you how you can automate your report so it gets data over time. And then we're going to build a dashboard. Pretty straightforward. OK, so the first step is to install and configure the script. So I'm going to go create a new tab. I'm going to go to Drive, Google Drive. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new spreadsheet. And I'm going to tile this Nick's demo. Okay. So to get all the different app scripts, we actually have this in the script gallery. And if you go to Tools Script Gallery, we can go in here, uh, look under Public, uh, and let's we'll search for Magic. And it's the Google Analytics Report Automation Magic Script is what we're going to demo. So we'll hit, click Install. It'll take a second to install this here. And we don't need to do this right now. We'll just say it's installed. We'll close it. Great. So we've installed the script. Now we need to go ahead and configure the script to access our data. Uh, all the data in Google Analytics require any sort of scripts that access data through the Google Analytics API requires registration. It's completely free. It's simple to do. Um, and I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So if you go to Tools, you go to the Script Editor. The script editor shows all the code that actually we wrote for the script. You actually you can use it. It's a great starting point if you want to write your own script. There's a lot of best practices in here. Um, but you actually don't have to touch anything. All you need to do is go under Resources. Go ahead under Use Google APIs. And this is where we're going to allow the script to access Google Analytics data. And so you only have to set this up the first time. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and click I'm going to go under the Google Analytics version 3, go ahead and click on. Uh, and then I need an API key. And the API key you get through the Google's API console. So I'm going to go ahead to the APIs console over here. There's a new tab that got created. I'm going to go and create a new project. So next demo. Uh, under the services on the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and enable Analytics API. And then finally, I'm going to click under API access. Now under simple API access, there is an API key 
And this is just the, the, the text, the string I actually need for my API key. So I'm going to select it, copy it. I'm going to go back to the script and paste that value right there. Okay, that was pretty simple, straightforward. You can watch the video again. After I do that, I hit save, and we're good to go. We've configured, installed, and configured the script, and everything should work fine. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Again, you have to only do this the first time. Uh, once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. So I've gone ahead and installed the script. I'm going to click refresh, and the script's going to run when the, once it's installed. It takes a second here after it's been installed. And what we've seen, there it is. We've seen a new menu item called Google Analytics, uh, which the script created for us. When we installed the script, we also created a new tab called jconfig. And jconfig is going to contain all the different report configurations. It doesn't contain the data. It contains the report configurations. So the first thing we want to do now is create a report in analytics. So I go to the tab, and we can create core reports. We can also create multi-channel funnel reports. For this demo, we'll just look at a core report. Uh, we'll go ahead and select that. And what happens is, in this, we have to go ahead and authorize here. Uh, this is allowing the script to grant access to my data. So I'll go ahead and grant access to the data. Go ahead and close it. OK. So I've, I've granted access. Um, let me try this one more time here. You only have to actually grant access once. Uh, once you've granted access, you can query the API uh, over and over and over again. You don't have to actually go through that flow, and that way you can, when you automate this, uh, you know, there's nothing that's stopping you. You just continue getting the data. Okay, so after I clicked the Create Core Report, um, we create under the GA Config tab a list of configurations for the specific report I want to pull. Uh, there's a bunch of query parameters here. Uh, all these query parameters correspond to the core reporting API. And so if you want a detailed definition of what those are, you can take a look at a reference doc. And at the end of the video, there's a bunch of references where you can learn about these different parameters. I'm going to walk you through the main ones. In Google Analytics, all reports belong to what's called a reporting profile. And through our API, you specify the reporting profile through a parameter called IDs or IDS. So to get the IDS parameter, we created a little tool. It's under the Google Analytics tab. It says Find Profile IDs. Go ahead and click that. It works. We run a couple queries to our uh, management API here, and a little dialog pops up. And here we can select our account, or web property, and our profile. So if you have any accounts, this is for the, for the user who's authorized. In this case, we're going to go ahead and click this Google um, Store, and it's this GA parameter. There it is. The GA parameter that we're going to use for the IDS. So we go ahead and copy that and paste it there. You can specify the start and end date, just like you can configure the date range in analytics. Um, in this case, we just want to uh, query for the last end day. So we'll look for the last 28 days. For metrics, we're going to look at GA visitors, look at GA visits, and GA page views. Now there's a whole bunch of dimensions and metrics that you can query with our API. There's a whole list. You can link to it from, uh, we link to it from the reference section at the end of the video. So take a look at that. Um, here we're looking for visitors, visits, and page views, and we want to look at them by day, so we look at the date. And we want to output the results into a new Google Sheet called Report 1. Okay, so there we have it. We've configured our first report, and now we can go to the Google Analytics menu tab and click Get Data. We're going to execute this query to the Google Analytics API. Um, the query is going to go run, the API is going to fetch the data, and then the results are going to get formatted uh, into a new sheet. Great, so we just query the API. A little dialog comes up that tells us whether any errors occurred or everything was successful. Here we see everything was successful and it's done, so we can close the dialog. Sometimes we just need to go between the sheets, and boom, there's all the data from the API. There's no code required. There's a little configuration, but once we've done it, we now have easy access to all the data in, in the API. Um, what's nice about the data being in Google Spreadsheets is, of course, that once you have the data, there's some really nice built-in visualization. So if we select the data and click Insert Chart here, 
Um, by default, the data will automatically come into a chart. We can go ahead and insert that, and boom, we have a nice little chart visualization of the data we pulled through the API. Pretty easy. Great, so let's go ahead and create maybe another report. Again, all the report configurations in this jconfig tab. Uh, and so let's create another core report. I'll go up to Google Analytics. I'll create a core report. The script will run here. And we see another configuration, two columns for the configuration. So this next report, I'm going to query for the same profile, J1174. Last 10 days, it's going to be last 28 days. The metrics in this case, I want to do J page views. And the dimensions, I want all the pages on the site. So I'll say J page path. This time I want to sort it by page views to get the top 25 pages on the site. So I'll sort by minus GA page views. The minus sign means that I want to sort by descending order. Again, all of this is documented in the, in the API documentation. Uh, I only want the top 25 results, so I'll go ahead and click 25. And in this sheet, I want the output to be put into report number two. Great. So now I want to get the data for this new report. I go back to Google Analytics and I click Get Data. And now what happens is the script goes and it's going to go and it's going to see both of these query configurations. It's going to go execute the query for query one here and put the results into report one. And then it's going to go execute query two and put the final results in report two. Great. So we've just got the data back from the API. Uh, the status tells us that we found two report configurations, which right. is correct. So we've just we executed the data back query from the API. one, and it was successful. Uh, the status tells results. us that we, we executed found two report two here, configurations, and it was successful, and we executed and the query one, and it was successful. And the script and script and script and script and for example, if query we one failed, failed two here, here, query one failed here, here and but query two might have succeeded. This little report status is nice. Try to run all the different queries in one order, failed, one failed, query one failed here, continue executing the query two might have succeeded. Alert. So we try to run all the different queries in order, and if one fails, we continue in the two, and there it is. Boom. Here's all the data we got from the API. So again, go ahead and no close code. this. Just a little bit of configuration. Back. It's pretty easy to do. And there it is. Um, again, I can Here's go ahead and select this from the and use some API. of the built-in visualizations. No just a little bit of configuration. Go ahead and click insert it's pretty chart. easy to do. Click on um, charts. Again, I can go ahead and select uh, this and use some of the built-in visualizations chart? to Google Spreadsheets. I'll go ahead and insert that go ahead and chart click there. Insert chart. And here's just a nice little chart. Click visualization. Under more, there's a table chart. Great. So I just I'll showed you how to insert that table create chart there. data. And um, here's just a nice little quick visualization. Get data from the API. Now, great. So I just showed you, you how to. You've gone create ahead and you've data, found your two um, reports. And now you want to create this reports, data. Get data every from day. the API. In Google now, Spreadsheets, there's some let's very say you've, uh, you've gone nice ahead features called found triggers your two reports that allow now you to automate data all every day. Let me show you how to Google Spreadsheets, there's some very nice features called triggers that allow you to automate pulling all this data. Uh, and let me show you how to use that. And again, the script editor so is where all the first need to go to tools. All the code. Uh, there's and a we'll feature go to the script here editor resources called triggers. Script editor is uh, where all triggers allows you to automate code. Scripts and apps. Uh, there's a feature so I'll here under triggers here. Resources called and what triggers. I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a new trigger in app script. So I'll click uh, on the trigger all is my now going to call here. get data. And what and I'm going to so do get data function is I'm going to go ahead and get I'm data add a new trigger to get all the data. There's a function uh, the called trigger get data. is now going to call part get of the data. And so and the get data function with this we every use the time get this data menu runs, item it's going to get all the analytics. There's a function called get data configurations part of the drop query for all that data and run those with this every time this function runs it's going to query the analytics is going to go through all those configuration basis query for all that data every hour every day. Here so we'll have it every hour. I can create this to run be it every hour. Done so on a timely every basis. hour, and I can uh, make it once happen every script hour. Is saved, day, every hour. Here we'll have it every all hour. the configurations run it every read. So and the script every will hour, just go to Google Analytics. Uh, and pull once data the script is saved every really hour, nice. that means this all, all the data is going to be updated and be read without having to touch it. The script will just go to Google Analytics. Now, if there's an error, you can actually create a notification. That means this all the data is really important. Without having to touch you it. You don't want to have the script running and now if there's errors an error, you can actually create a notification. So what we can do is we can um, change so this, this is to really immediately to and that means you don't want to have the script running and encounter causing errors, errors and not well, knowing about it. So immediately what we can do is we can change this email to be immediately. Here, uh, and that means anytime the script runs and encounters okay, an error, so all I need to do is we'll click OK, immediately be saved at our email here. Uh, and then we can go back. And that's it. The trigger's been saved. So all I need to do is go ahead and close this. 
click save, uh, and now what will happen is every hour, and that's it. Uh, the trigger the script saved. will automatically now I can go, go to close this get this, data function uh, here, and now what will happen is execute every hour, all the different configurations. Uh, the script will reports. automatically go to this. Well, I just showed you now how to automate here, all your reports from analytics. The last step here is how you can create a dashboard and update all the reports. Uh, and it's really easy to do. Well, I just showed you now how to automate all your reports from analytics. I'm gonna go the last step here is how you can create a dashboard. Uh, and it's really Actually, easy I'm to do to go using Google Sites. Tab and go to Google. So I'm going to go ahead back over to Google Drive. And Actually, Google I'm Sites going is to go free. So create a new tab here. here. I'm going to go ahead Google and create a new Google Sites. Site. Um, my demo. And Google Sites is free, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new yep. Google Site. Pretty straightforward. Um, my demo. Um, the hardest part here is probably trying to type in this uh, little code here. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. I think I've done it. Um, the hardest part here is probably trying site. to type in this uh, uh, of little code I here. Didn't do it right. Okay, I think I've done it. I'm gonna go ahead and create that site. Uh, of course, I didn't do it right. Great. So I created a Google site. Uh, first thing I want to do here is go ahead and edit a page. We'll just do this one. And now I want right. to go over to so the I created a Google site. New. Uh, first thing I want to do here is chart. go ahead and edit a page. And so we'll just do this all the one. charting. And now I want to go over to the, the charts insert menu. First shows you all the spreadsheets that you have chart. access to here. And so all the charting, the data for the charts. Uh, and so shows you we've all been the using this demo that, that I created to here uh, in the spreadsheet. So I'll go ahead and collect select that. And so we've been and using this demo that I created those charts uh, in, the in the spreadsheet. So I'll go ahead and get select that, here. which is really nice. So I'll go ahead and get that and data over time chart. Because we created chart, those charts, I'll go ahead and save that. Automatically getting pulled into here. Yes, we have another really one. Nice. I'll go ahead. And so I'll go ahead and get that data over time chart. I'll go ahead and save that. And since we have another one, I'll go ahead and go to insert and chart. Save it. Now all I need go to, to do is save. Again. Boom. This one I'll do the page. There it is. Time. There's my dashboard save it. that I just created. Now all I need to do is save using Google Sites, Google Spreadsheets, and App Scripts. There it is. There's my um, now, dashboard. This is currently that I just only available from scratch to shelf using. Uh, now, if uh, I want to share Google spreadsheets, really and easy. App scripts. The first thing I need to do is make um, sure that the data source is currently that I have only is available, available to myself. Uh, so the now, first thing I want to do is, is enable is sharing really on easy this page. The first thing I need to do is make sure that the data source that I have is available. So for I'll click everybody. on the sharing button. So the first thing to do uh, by is default it's shared on this. So I'm going to go ahead and change that and say anyone with the link. So I'll click on sharing button. Uh, by default, it's okay, private. No so I'm going to go ahead and change that. And then now, that when and I'm on my site, with the link. Now, now um, all the data is available to anybody who has the link, and the site okay, has the link. No so now, when I and share then this, now when I'm on my site, um, now now all the data nice is available because now I can share this link, email, or I link, Google Plus. So now when I share friend, this, uh, and um, I can send it to people who are interested in my site, and say, "Hey, here's the updated data. I can Google Plus this look, friends. Let's see." And I can send it to people right. who are interested so just in my site and say, hey, here's everything. the updated data. Um, uh, take I showed you how to install and configure uh, the magic script. Reports. I showed you how you can create your first right. report. So I just how to automate that went through report everything. and then how to build um, a dashboard. I showed you how to install and so configure the, last the magic here script. Is all our various you resources. You report. Um, how to automate that report and then how to build a dashboard. So the last steps here is all our various um, resources. We wrote a full tutorial um, on how to actually write the code to create actually a Here's our resource our API um, using apps. Wrote a full so there's tutorial, a tutorial if you want to write code. How to actually write uh, the code. If you want to take a look at the reference actually uh, all the analytics our API data using apps for that tutorial here. Tutorial if you want to write uh, code. There's a bunch of query parameters. Uh, if you want to take a look at the reference tab or all the analytics data. Full definition. Take a look at the reference here. API. There's a bunch of query parameters. Finally, there's over 200 dimensions tab. You can query the full definition. Take a look at a comprehensive list of this link. Go ahead and finally there's a there's over 200 dimensions of uh, hopefully this tool, the script, so we create a comprehensive list data this link without writing any go code. Ahead and and really go ahead and go to that list, take, take a lot of analytics, uh, do and hopefully and this share. tool, this Thanks. script, will allow you to access all your data without writing any code, make it really easy to take that data out of analytics, do new things, and share it. Thanks.